so today I'm going to be doing a MAC hit or miss video and it's going to be a great starter kit for everyone who has not tried out MAC cosmetics and want to get to know it better. So I'm just going to go through everything that I have in my collection. I of course don't have every single item from MAC. I would be bankrupt by now because it is an expensive brand, but I do research each object pretty well, like I go on Makeup Alley and Tintalia to really go into depth before purchasing anything. I don't have any like MAC liquid foundations because I heard like people break out from it so I don't have any of that but I do have a substantial collection. The first thing I like to talk about are brushes. So are brushes MAC hits or misses? Definitely these are MAC hits because these are awesome. Not only are they super soft, super fluffy, these are professionally shaped so this one's like the MAC 134. I love this paddle brush. Coastal Sense has a dupe for it. But I really love how it's so big and fluffy, so I definitely think these are hits. But do keep in mind that these are very pricey, but they're pricey for a reason. They're handmade, very high quality, and will last you for ages if you take care of them. So I have one MAC lip gloss, and it is in Young Thing, which is like a nude sort of color. I have only worn this out like once or twice because I'm not really into the nude lip, although I don't know what I'm wearing today. I'm using the NARS Patina Pencil but I'm not really into the nude lip. I sincerely think that this is definitely not a gloss that you should take because there's so many other substitutes that feel a lot creamier and moisturizing on your lips. This one feels really sticky and thick. It's moisturizing to an extent, but it's really thick. So if you don't like thick, syrupy lip glosses, this definitely isn't for you, the lip glasses. They come in cute colors, but I think this is a miss. The MAC Studio Finish Concealer in SPF 30. I have the one in NC30. I use this every single day and I love this. This is definitely a hit. I use this to cover up like any blemishes that I have. It's like a tattoo concealer almost because as a really high coverage, a lot of people complain that it's somewhat too thick and too sort of cakey to put onto anything. I don't suggest it for the under eye because it does have a really high coverage, but you just have to warm it up with your fingers and then put it on your face and it goes on really nicely and it covers basically everything so I love how it's so convenient I can just carry it around in my makeup case and whenever I need to cover up a blemish outside I can just use this so this is pretty awesome another MAC hit is the MAC Select Cover Up Concealer this is also a MAC hit for places where it's dry so this is not good this is not a good concealer if you have really dry flaky areas this is a much better concealer for that where it covers up sort of if you have acne and you're using acne creams and medications that can definitely dry up areas of your skin where it can turn flaky so using this instead of this is a lot better because this one is sort of a creamy liquidy formula it's more of a cream really and it will help you you also need just the tiniest amount to apply on your blemishes I don't suggest it for on the go because you do need a fair amount of blending for it to look very natural. A MAC Mist, this is the MAC Zoom Lash. It's in tester size, but the only thing this really did for me was to basically elongate my lashes. And of course for me, you guys know me, I love it when I can actually see curl. And my lashes I know are the most stubborn lashes, so if this won't work for me, then it probably won't work for you. But I'm just saying. The MAC Black Track Fluid Line. So this has been definitely a very popular product in the UT world. This has this is actually my first one, so you can see I have used a fair bit of it. But it's there's still a lot left. So you do have money value for your for your product. So there's a lot of product in this. But I do suggest that you do get this. This is definitely a MAC hit because it stays on for ages. It's very, very pigmented. I'm also very tired of having eyeliners that aren't very pigmented because it's sort of you have to layer it. This you don't have to layer it. You just use in a brush like the MAC 209 and it goes on wonderfully. I use it for my just my normal line, not my waterline or tight line. And it stays on for ages. It's my holy grail, one of my holy grail gel liner. Another MAC hit is definitely the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish and is in medium plus. I don't know about your color, but I'm sure they're all the same formula. I have run out of this. This is my third one, and I've already hit pan like that, so I have to go get another one. I'm in love with this. I don't think I could use another face powder besides this. I haven't found a dupe for it. I have tried the Maybelline Dream Matte powder or something, and it's not the same, guys. Like, I have to do a drug drugstore hit or miss, but... That's not the same as this, I'm sorry. This has more coverage and it's a much finer texture. This is 
a mineralized skin finish. It's good for you because it is mineralized, but I'm sure there are chemicals in there. But I don't care because it gives you such a flawless finish and it's perfect for setting your foundation. The MAC Blot Powder. And I have Hit Pan. This is, I think, also my third one. And I love this powder because it's great for touching up through the day. I am currently interested in blot papers, so I want to try that out, probably the clean and clear one soon. I do like this because it provides a teensy bit of coverage, very, very little. It's not supposed to provide you any coverage at all, but it does provide you little coverage while making your face sort of glow, sort of subtly glow. So I really like that. And it's great as a touching up powder. I do keep this in my makeup bag on the go, so I have it whenever I need it. A MAC Mist, and you're going to probably like raise the roof with this one because a lot of people will disagree with me, but I really think that MAC lipsticks are MAC Misses because there's so many good lipsticks out there. And even the Maybelline Pure Sensational lipsticks are pretty good in formula. The Rimmel Lasting Finish lipsticks are pretty good in formula. If you're looking at drugstore, in terms of affordability, but if you're looking at more high-end, definitely these these aren't so awesome at all because you have the YSL, you have the Chanel, you have the Shiseido. Those lipsticks feel like, they don't feel like lipsticks, they feel like lip balms, but they provide the same pigmentation. If you're interested in more MAC lipsticks, then you can check out my blog post below because I do give a thorough review of what I think about MAC lipsticks in general. So I'm going to go through the five formulas that I do have and that I do have in my collection. I do have quite a bit. I have 13 MAC lipsticks and I do regret buying them simply because now I have the Chanel and YSL and they beat MAC's formula out the door. So the first one is the Frost sort of finish and you're looking at a shimmery frost look. It's sort of when you apply it, it's sort of silvery so you don't really see much of the color but you do see a silver frost look and that's what's special about these lipsticks. I feel that they are semi-moisturizing but not over the top lip balm or anything like that, but they are semi-moisturizing, they're not dry. The Luster lipsticks, these are probably one of the most moisturizing lipsticks, this one's in syrup. One of the most moisturizing lipsticks out there in terms of the MAC lipstick collection. They give a subtle shimmer and they're lighter in pigmentation, they're a step up from glaze and they are pigmented to an extent but they do give a sort of a glossy look like a lip gloss look, an amplified lipstick, there goes my phone, and this one is in Dark Side, and this is an amplified lipstick which means it's really really intense in color and it gives off really a really really dark pigmented lips. I feel like this is more of a lip tint than a lipstick because it's way too dark. It doesn't blend as well as I'd like and it sort of tints, it's better as a tint because it does stay on for a really long time after you've applied it. A matte finish and this one is in Kinda Sexy. I do like these finishes because they give you a really nice sort of poster finish where it's a matte, very natural but very highly pigmented lips in terms of the color you're looking at. This was in Kinda Sexy. I did use this in my Lost in Atlantis tutorial but I think that they are, they do dry up and they do settle into your fine lines after a period of time. And I remember wearing these, they're so pigmented that your inner, if you don't spread your lips thoroughly, inside you can see the, your own color of your lips and it's really weird when it dries up and settles into your fine lines. And if you have dry lips and you flake, it looks like the most horrible thing ever. That's happened to me. And the next one is a cream sheen and this one is in Shy Girl. This is not too... It's not too moisturizing at all. I would definitely say it, it's, it's correct in the pigmentation. It's a bit dry. That's all. So I do have a satin lipstick. I don't know where it is, but I do have one. I have to say that was probably one of the most drying lipsticks I've ever tried. So going on, those are misses. I'm sorry if you are guys are like, oh my god, I have so many MAC lipsticks and I love them. But you know what? I don't. Yeah, I just don't. Because I love those Chanel and YSL. And although you're paying like what, um, 10 or 15 more dollars for your Chanel or YSL, like it's going to last you, it's going to feel a lot better on your lips and you're making such a better investment than investing in the MAC ones. And the MAC ones I bought because there was such a big YouTube hype of it, there's such a big vlog hype about, about it, the names are cute, the colors are cute, but when you really look deep into the MAC lipstick collection, are they really worth your money? 
I beg to differ. The MAC Prep and Prime Eye, and I really like this product. This is definitely a hit, and it is a Prep and Prime. Okay, a lot of people say, oh, Roseanne, you know what, I hate this product because it's so cakey, and it doesn't make my eyeshadows stay, and it doesn't boost the color of my eyeshadows. Girl, they're not supposed to do that. If you see your, the MAC description of this product, it's supposed to be a lid concealer, and it's supposed to make a perfect canvas for your eye, because often when you apply your foundation, your color, the color of your skin of your eye doesn't match your foundation, and because of that, you have sort of a red, well I do, have a reddish tint, so I like to cover it up and then use my Urban Decay Primer Potion to make my eyeshadow stay longer and to boost the color. So this is just an ordinary lid concealer. I really like it for that purpose, and I would definitely keep on rebuying it. My pit pan. And the last thing I'm going to talk about are blushes. I love MAC blushes. I am in love. I love their sheer tone blushes. Definitely in love. I'm in love with the sheer tones because they do, they are very pigmented. They're not over the top priced or anything. And they're just pigmented. They're, they sweep on color perfectly and they really nicely highlight your cheeks. So I have the one in pink smooth. It really depends on the color because a lot of people, I don't like them because sometimes you're choosing the wrong color for your cheeks. It depends what skin color. Are you a cool tone? Are you a yellow tone? You can look at your underarm. I see, you can see your, sorry, your veins. You can see that. You can see that mine are green. That means I'm an NC instead of an NW. And different blushes suit accordingly because they're, of course, different colors. Some blushes are cooler tone, whereas some others are warm tone. So the one I have, Pink Swoon, definitely a warm tone. This one's, I think this one can go two ways. This one's in Blush Baby. I really like this one as well. These are definitely must-haves, and I do have the MAC Right Peach Blush Ombre. These are definitely MAC hits. I mean, you're talking about Pink Spoon, Blush Baby, and the Right Peach Peach Ombre. I get so many looks with this. Like, all you have to do with this, and I've mentioned this a couple times already, but you just take your blush brush and use the tip of your blush brush to sort of dab in motion the the darker side of the blush ombre and you sort of apply it to this area and then you use the flat side of your blush brush to tap the sort of yellowy center right there and you do it for the rest of your remaining cheek and you get sort of a beautiful sunset on your cheeks no joke and I got this tip from Jo Makes Me Blush which is a YouTuber I think that's her username but she's great and she yeah, taught all her subscribers that trick and that works amazing so you can't get this anymore. It has been discontinued, of course. It was a limited edition of the Spring Summer. I forgot what it's called, but Spring Summer, all those blush ombres like the Azale Azalea Blossom. This one was the one that was sold out like this. <laughs> hit or miss. Now, time for your MAC hits or misses. Thank you so much to everyone who participated on my Facebook page when I asked you what was your MAC hit or miss, and now it's your turn to have your say. So I'll see you guys later. Bye!